Hey guys, welcome back and welcome if you are new. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I cannot wait to share with you 30 DIY Dollar Tree Easter Spring Decor Crafts. So this is another episode in my huge I Love Spring series. I love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. And this is a compilation video of all of the crafts that we have done in the last couple of weeks. I know you guys are crazy for these compilation videos. A lot of you guys like to press play and either craft, clean, or just relax and have fun catching up on any of the crafts you miss and just getting inspired. So without further ado, go ahead and plug in your glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a French farmhouse fabric carrot. So I'm taking some of this leftover scrap of fabric, some Walmart grocery shopping bags, and some little leaves here, and then some paper towel rolls. We're going to take our paper towel roll and cut it in half. That is going to create the base of our carrot. I'm also going to unwind the paper towel roll from the start of where it starts to wind up. And then you're just going to go ahead and give it a bit of a twist. And then you'll take your shopping bags. I used two for half of a paper towel roll. And I'm just gonna squishy up the shopping bag in one end and then squishy it up in the other end. And this is the fun part. You can go ahead and give it a little squeeze. You wanna kinda create the shape of a carrot form by twisting and turning your shopping bags and your paper towel rolls. And it's okay if it looks like a bit of a hot mess because we're gonna cover it with some fabric so nobody is gonna see your work underneath. And this is how it should look after you've done a bit of twisting and turning. Now I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree baby blanket. I love this because it's great for a French farmhouse feel and it also matches some pillows that I made out of Dollar Tree baby blankets in my living room. Definitely check out the link down below for all of my fun and fabulous crafts. Now I'm going to add the little twist paper towel roll onto the bit of fabric and add some hot glue. I'm going to continue to roll the fabric inward and add dabs of hot glue as I go. That's going to secure it on to the fabric and also on to your little roll. Continue to roll till you get your entire thing covered and then you can just take some scissors and trim off that excess fabric. If you're really particular, you can also leave an extra edge, fold it under so you'll get a nice seamless edge. But this is just a little garden carrot, so no worries here for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the end and I'm just going to poke it down in the center, add a dab of hot glue to the little cardboard roll and then you can just push your excess fabric in and voila you have a very fun and fabulous French farmhouse carrot. The next thing you want to do to finish off the more tapered end is you can just pull the fabric in, give it a bit of a twist and add a dab of hot glue and then you can even fold that little tiny end under if you want a more of a finished edge and this is how it should look. Don't be frustrated, the first one of my carrots was not the best. So continue to practice and have fun with this. Now I'm gonna take my tulip green leaf, which I didn't have any really great green leaves to make for my carrot. So I'm just making them a little bit more spindly and fun. And so I'm just going to add another dab of hot glue to the end of my carrot and then pop in some greenery. So this is really fun, fabulous, and easy. And I'm gonna tell you guys that I see these little fabric carrots out pretty much everywhere at all of the home decor stores. Hobby Lobby, Michaels, TJ Maxx. They're always in fun and neat prints. And I think it's just a fun, whimsical way to add some little carrots into your home decor. They look beautiful in baskets or to any pretty much little Easter vignette. I like the soft grays. I think it's really beautiful. I also did create some in that ticking fabric you can see off to my right and also some buffalo check plaid ones as well. Now that I'm finished with several of my carrots, I ended up making about seven on this day. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off a piece of jute twine that I found at Dollar Tree. I'm wrapping it around my little bundle of carrots and then I'm going to tie them because you know I've been shopping at the French farmhouse market and so I'll have to have them added into my fabulous basket. So here is how they are looking popped in to my little Easter vignette with my darling bunny, my calm and cozy candle, and then my super snuggly little French farmhouse carrots. The other thing I like about having these fabric carrots is it gives a bit of a textural element to any 
of your displays that you're doing for spring, which I think is nice to add in that cozy vibe. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we are going to take these two little signs and then these two little Dollar Tree frames. I found all of these goodies at the Dollar Tree. And what I want to do is take my two extra Stolium spray paint and just go ahead and spray paint my frames. You can get the super cheap spray paint at Walmart, but I do like the 2X because it has a primer in it. And then I'm taking some of this Waverly Antique Wax um, after I'm done spray painting my little frames. I let them dry and then I'm just going to take this antique wax and kind of gently go over them. I'm using a bit of a cloth. This cloth is just an old rag I had. It suggests to use a lint-free towel. You can also use a chalk paint brush. I didn't have either one of those really on hand, although I think that my little rag here might be lint-free. I'm really hoping it is. I don't see lots of lint, but I'm just going to add a very, very tiny amount of my antique wax and then brush that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some hot glue in and around my little Dollar Tree frame. This one says God Goals and Grind. I think this will be cute, really cute for me to wake up to. And adding the dab of hot glue will secure this. I do want to suggest you add a dab of E6000 glue to this as well to get it to stay on really nicely um, if this is going to be your finished product. I'm also adding the same frame. I did it in the same style with the white spray paint and then the bit of antique wax and then I'm just going to take the backing off of those frames and hot glue them to the back of the little um, sign and that way they can both stand up. So I think this is so great. I really feel like this is something you would find at Hobby Lobby for about six to twelve dollars or um, any of your home decor stores. Little did we know that it was only from the Dollar Tree with a bit of paint and TLC. We made these really beautiful little custom signs and I really think it glammed them up to add those touches of that extra scrolly design frame. Also if you're decorating in a French farmhouse style the little scrolly designs are very um, French. We'll say that I suppose um, or shabby chic or just whatever suits your fancy. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to make some carrot napkin rings. I'm taking these Dollar Tree napkin rings. They come in a six pack in the Dollar Tree party section and I'm just using this burlap colored fabric and you want to go ahead and hot glue a dab of hot glue onto your napkin ring and then just begin to wrap the burlap around your napkin ring. Now remember you can customize this to suit whatever decor that you love. I'm sure it's showing burlap here but I'm also going to show you guys a little bit more of a girly um, kind of a French farmhouse glam style with some lace ribbon but just dig into your stash. You could use fabric. You could wrap it around um, the napkin ring. I'm just hot gluing till I got all the way uh, where I was covering the silver. You could even paint these, but for time's sake, I decided just to use this ribbon. And then I'm hot gluing my cute little Dollar Tree carrot on. The Dollar Tree carrots come, I believe four to six to a pack. And then you have something very customized, something you would find at maybe a Pier 1 Imports or your home decor stores for very, very lots less, very budget friendly, I would say. So now I'm just adding this burlap, um, ribbon on here. Now this came with a bit of lace. I got both of these ribbons from burlapfabric.com. I will leave a coupon code Olivia Spring that will give you five dollars off if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm just wrapping it around the little napkin ring and then I just want to add a little dab of hot glue to the center here and add the carrot. Um, don't go too generous on your hot glue with the carrot because the carrot is rather lean and so you don't want the hot glue to be popping up. Here's how they look. They fit perfectly with the thrift store linen napkin that I found onto my little table setting and I do hope to share with you all some beautiful spring and Easter table settings in my dining room. I'm hoping to work on refinishing my tabletop. I used it for years for crafting. It's quite a mess so I do always have to use a table covering um, but here is this beautiful little vignette. I think it's so beautiful and wonderful to do these beautiful handmade crafts on a budget. For 
the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna take some white Waverly chalk paint that I found at Walmart. My store finally had the white back in stock, and I'm just going to chalk paint this large garden planter that I found at the Dollar Tree. I love this one because it had a basket weave on it, and it is plastic, but the chalk paint does adhere fairly well to plastic. Now, this is going to be an indoor DIY only, so I suggest if you're doing something with outdoors, you may want to use more of a metal garden planter um, that you're chalk painting but let me know if you guys do try this and use it outside um, and I'll try to let you all know if I try this technique outside as well so then I'm gonna go in again with the Waverly antique um, wax and I just want to add a bit of wax in and around where after I had chalk painted I let it dry but I wanted to give it a bit of an aged appearance and pick up some of those lovely little basket weavings on the side again when you're going for kind of that French farmhouse feel you want things to feel a bit lived in and aged and then I'm just taking one of those Dollar Tree um, little brown basket planters you can actually plant real flowers in here but for now I'm just gonna use some faux lavender they have it at Walmart for 97 cents a bundle it's really lovely and it does not shed like the Dollar Tree lavender does I did pop in some little floral foam into the base of this I want to create an indoor lavender I actually planted real lavender last summer um, of course that is is gone right now because it's the middle of winter so I thought it'd be nice to plant some beautiful lavender well this is our faux lavender and then just have it inside my home and maybe even spritz it with some lavender spray um, just to kind of bring spring inside my home um, I did do okay with my real lavender that was outside last year but I will tell you that I know that my faux lavender is going to last much longer <laughs> so and now I'm just trimming off the little bundles I ended up using five bundles from Walmart of their faux lavender this would also be beautiful with tulips or you could do lilacs or whatever suits your fancy and whatever kind of home decor that you're decorating with but I think it's fun to add kind of this uh, fresh lavender look into a French farmhouse look I also did go in with a bit of moss and kind of add that in and around so you couldn't see any of the floral foam and here is how it is looking it almost looks real to me which I absolutely love but then you don't have all of the maintenance of having that real lavender and it can bring that pop of spring inside and I think the camera is picking up where it looks a little bit blue but it actually looks more purple in person but so fun and fabulous and all ready for some spring dreaming <laughs> For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Be Grateful little sign, and this kitchen is seasoned with love. I found them both at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove them from the Dollar Tree frames, and then I wanna take these little Dollar Tree frames and go ahead and give them a nice layer of chalk paint, and I will tell you that I did use two coats of the Waverly White chalk paint that I found at Walmart. It's definitely hands down my favorite chalk paint, unless I'm making my own. Now that I've given my frame some time to dry, again, I'm gonna go in with this Waverly Antique um, Wax Finish, and I'm just going to very gently with my little towel kind of rub the wax finish over the frame. So when I went about this process, I did give a little bit, and do not use very much of that wax. Use a tiny bit, a tiny bit will go a long way. If you want it more antique, then you just add in more. But then if you do feel like that you have added too much, you can go back in with the part of your towel that doesn't have any wax on it and just gently um, wipe any excess off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put my little pictures back in. I will be using these in my kitchen. I have started collecting some of the Pioneer Woman decor and I feel like this matches so nicely with it. And I think just the simple act of painting those Dollar Tree frames took this photo or this little picture up um, so much it just looks so much more high-end having that cheap frame painted um, and you know maybe if you're loving a little bit more of a different feel maybe of a modern farmhouse you could just paint it all the way 
dark gray or um, whatnot, but here it is mixed in with this beautiful little French farmhouse setting. And I just love the be grateful reminder. I think it's such a big reminder. I think this year is going to be my year of being just obsessively grateful and thankful. Um, I always find that when I'm more grateful in my life, that I just do better. I am more happy and at peace and at ease with everything and everyone around me. So there's my little 2020 mantra. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, again, I'm going to take that 2X with primer spray paint. I spray painted my little Dollar Tree pots. You buy them three to a pack at Dollar Tree. They're just little clay pots. And then once those had dried, again, I'm going in with that Waverly Antique um, wax and I'm just gently antiquing these. You could even add in some more paint to give it even more of an aged look with like some grays and blacks and some layers. Um, but when I go in for a springtime look, a lot of times I just want a very light layer of antiquing underneath a very bright white. Um, and then I'm just going to add in some styrofoam and just hot glue that to the base and then pop in some more lavender. So these are going to be some mini lavender pots, which I thought might look nice setting next to my larger lavender pot. I think these would even do okay outside on my covered bench on my front porch. So if I pop them out there, um, I will definitely let you guys know. And I will also probably add some rocks because we live on a hill and um, add some rocks into the base of these. That way they don't fly away because when the wind kicks up I have everything on my front porch likes to end up in the neighbor's next door yard so anyway um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop some more lavender in for these two little Dollar Tree tiny pots it took two bundles of lavender so I hope that helps and then here we go oh my goodness this is definitely what I'm thinking for how I want to de decorate my dining room I want to find some more of these bunny plates this was actually my mom's sorry mom if you're missing this plate um, um, but this was hers and so I think she had brought over some um, baked treats and then somehow it just found its way into my stash not on purpose I promise <laughs> um, but anyway here is an overview of everything in this set of DIYs as always I ask that you comment let me know what was your favorite DIY in this session and which one would you all love to be recreating and I just want to thank you for everybody that's posting on my Livy's Romantic Home Facebook group page. I am so inspired by your beautiful pictures of your home decor and your DIYs. I would love to invite everybody over there to share in the fun um, community over there. And then also don't forget to tag me on Instagram, Olivia's Romantic Home Instagram, and then I can share your DIYs on my story. So thank you guys again. And don't forget to comment and let me know which one was your favorite. Um, and what do you guys think about the crazy little um, carrots made out of paper towel holders. <laughs> funny thing is, is I've had that DIY in my head for a while now. And I was even nervous this morning if I was going to be able to execute it. And I think it came out pretty darling. And there's those Buffalo check plaid ones. I made them in the exact same way as um, the checkered ones that I made using the Dollar Tree blankets. So I love y'all. And I'm so honored and blessed to have you here. I hope you're having a fun day crafting and just a gorgeous blessed day in general. For the first Dolly Tree DIY, I'm going to take this cute little Dolly Tree mini sign and this Happy Easter bunny bag. I found the mini sign at Dolly Tree and the bunny bag was in a two pack at Walmart. It was 98 cents for two of these little bags and they have a bunny on each side. I'm going to cut the bunny out and then I'm going to take a bit of white Waverly chalk paint. I get this at Walmart in the craft section and I'm just going to paint the little sign part of this and then I also decided to go in in and around and just kind of distress the outside and the inside of the little sign. I want to give it some character and also give it kind of a whitewashed aged appearance. So I'm just going to take my chalk and brush and kind of run it down along the sides. There's really, this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just give it a bit of a coating and then you can also wipe a bit of paint off. And then I wanted to go in with a little bit of the Mod Podge here and my little bunny that I cut out from the sign. And I'm just gonna Mod Podge the back of the little bunny 
and then I'm going to attach it to the front of this little sign here. And I'm just creating a fun little Easter cutout sign. So cute and adorable and oh so ready for Easter. Comment let me know if you guys are Easter crafting yet. And now I'm going to take some of the Waverly Antique Chalk Wax. I'm just going to use a tiny bit of it and go in and around the edges of my sign. Now the Waverly Chalk um, Wax is very forgiving so I really am loving that because I'm a little bit of a messy um, painter and waxer here but I love how it gave this, gave this sign an aged look and it's going to blend perfectly into my Easter decor. For the next DIY, I am going to use this 50 cent salad plate that I found at Walmart. It's a clear plate and also this bag. Again, I found these bags at Walmart. They were two for 98 cents. I'm also going to take this rubbing alcohol and I'm just going to clean the glass plate off to make sure there is no oily residue. And then I'm going to go in with some Mod Podge. This is the dishwasher safe Mod Podge and I'm just going to mix my Mod Podge up here. And then I want to go ahead and take and cut the card out. I want to get the little bunny head cut out of this. Now this is a gift bag, so be really careful when you're um, removing the gift handle part because you don't want to tear your binding. You could even heat it up to make the handle part a little bit um, easier to remove. I was lucky and it didn't tear, thank goodness. And then I did go ahead and continue to cut my little bunny head out a bit more. And then once I had my bunny head cut out, I added a layer of Mod Podge. Very nice and full here, a nice good layer. And then you're just going to flip your little bunny um, upside down to where you're going to want your bunny to show through the plate. I will let you know that the Mod Podge, it can be wiped off with soap, soap and water, um, but it is not food safe. So I just recommend using this for decor, decor purposes only. Um, and you can also wipe off the excess Mod Podge if you want, but I went, decided to go ahead and add some more Mod Podge and then use this really cute little plaid um, tissue paper. And I also found this at Walmart. Um, Dollar Tree also carries tissue paper, but I thought the blue plaid would be super cute. I've been noticing that uh, Pier 1 Imports is using a lot of blue plaid for um, Easter this year. So I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna press the tissue paper down onto my plate and then trim off the excess. And you will also want to add another layer of Mod Podge on the back of this. So once you have your layer of Mod Podge added onto your plate and that has given a chance to dry, you're just gonna take some chalk paint or any white craft paint will do and you're going to add a layer of paint to the back of this. Now this step is totally optional but the reason I did add this white paint is it made my tissue paper stand out really well and here is the finished product. I think these, this turned out so adorable. So basically it's tissue paper a clear play. Again, I found it for 50 cents at Walmart. Dollar Tree also carries clear plates, the little gift bag, and some tissue paper. I think the hardest part of this craft is definitely just being patient with your Mod Podge, letting that dry, and then adding that extra layer of paint. But how fun and fabulous, and you guys could really get creative. And let me just know where you find some really great little gift bags.
For the next DIY, I'm gonna take this eight by 10 frame. I actually found this at Walmart. It was $4. They have so many different styles to choose from. They're all $4, no matter what style or size you choose. I removed the glass from the front and then I'm gonna go in with my white chalk paint again and I am going to chalk paint this frame. It is so beautiful and scrolly. And if you guys have been following me, I'm doing a French farmhouse theme. So this is gonna be absolutely perfect. And I will let you know that I did do two layers of chalk paint on this frame. I went in and around the entire frame, making sure I had really good coverage. And I left that little insert with the eight by 10 on the inside. That way the paint could just go on that. Easy peasy. So once my chalk paint was all dry, I'm going in again with that antique wax um, and I'm just going to use this old towel and gently rub it around the entire frame. You can even push just a little bit harder and that will distress your frame. And again, the wax is super forgiving. I really encourage you guys to try this. I've never used the wax before, but I really felt like it made a huge difference. And also you, if you didn't have access to the wax or wanted to spend the money, you could just use a dab of brown paint. I have done that as well, or even maybe pop into your hubby's garage and see if he has some wood stain laying around. I've used that and they all work really great. But again, I am going for kind of that French farmhouse um, chic look. So I did go with that wax. Now I'm just using this gift bag. Again, I did find this at Walmart for 98 cents and I just want to trace in and around the gift bag. And you guys, I, you know, if you've been here for a while, with me. I really love to find ways to make framed art look beautiful without spending a lot of money. So this gift bag was 98 cents was super cheap. You can also look at Dollar Tree for super adorable gift bags. Um, your local craft stores, use your coupon, just get super creative. You can even check out your thrift stores. I know my thrift stores have a lot of gift bags, but if you love this darling bunny print, um, check your local Walmart. Again, 98 cents and they had quite a few of them. So that might make it a little bit easier actually I know some of you are having a bit of a hard time finding things at your local Dollar Tree so definitely check this out and how adorable and oh so French farmhouse chic is this I am in love with this bunny print it even has a bit of pale pink in the background if you didn't care for that you could always cut that out and frame it onto a different piece of paper but here it is mixed in with my darling little display I am so excited for Easter decorations now in my home I've really only done some spring decorating but I'm definitely um, doing some ideas in my head and on my Pinterest boards and just checking out different ways to decorate for Easter so I cannot wait to share with you guys more DIYs to come For the next DIY, again, I'm going to take an adorable little gift bag, 98 cents from Wally World, and some of this Mod Podge. You can find Mod Podge at Walmart or at your local Dollar Tree, and I'm going to cut this gift bag out. I knew when I saw this gift bag, this was going to be absolutely perfect for a decoupage plate. I think it is so fun and fabulous to create plates like this because you can really change up your decor, and it is so inexpensive, especially if you already have your Mod Podge on hand. You could even use some school glue or hot glue if you didn't want to spend the extra money on the Mod Podge. Now this Mod Podge you can rinse with soap and water to keep your plate from getting dusty. It's the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, but I will tell you that this is not food safe. So do not eat off of this plate. Um, it has not been approved for food safety. Um, so this is for decor purposes only. And my little gift bag, it did want to ruffle up. So I ended up using um, just some little heavier items to kind of hold it down while the glue began to dry, but no worries. After the glue began to dry, it held on just perfectly. I only used one 
second layer of the Mod Podge on this plate, but you could definitely use two. And just to remove the excess glue, you'll use some dabs of soap and water to get any excess glue off. I also added in this little rose on each side of the plate that was part of the gift bag. I just decoupaged those on and it recommends to let the decoupage dry for about two hours and then add another layer. Just a little tip on that one, um, but just for the video purposes only, I only did one layer, but definitely use two layers probably if you want this to be really nice and long lasting. I even think you can use three layers on Mod Podge. Comment and let me know if you're a professional Mod Podger out there. I would love to know your thoughts on how many layers we might need to use. So again, I'm using the little Happy Easter gift bag and a clear plate. This time I wanna do something a lot more simple with um, less busyness and less color. So I just cut my little Easter bunny out and then I'm adding a layer of Mod Podge again to the clear plate. And then I'm going to lay it upside down to where it's going to show through on the other side and then add another layer of Mod Podge over that. Now, once the Mod, Pod had, Mod Podge had dried, I am just going to add a layer of White Waverly chalk paint in and around my little bunny image. Again, this is step is probably extra, but if you guys want it to look more of like a white plate, um, you could definitely go for this, or you could even use a color. So if you were decorating with purples or pinks or greens, you could use those colors. You could even do the tissue paper trick around this. For this plate, I did use two layers of chalk paint, letting each layer dry about an hour to an hour and a half in between. Now for the next DIY, I'm just gonna take one of those plates again, these clear plates I found cheaper than Dolly Tree at Walmart right now. They are on clearance for 50 cents and 75 cents. The salad plate was 50 cents and the larger plate was 75 cents. And I'm coating the entire thing with a layer of Mod Podge. For this one, I wanna create a background plate for my little blue bunny plate. So after I had the entire plate coated with Mod Podge, I just went in with a layer of the tissue paper. This is in that blue plaid. Again, I'm totally inspired by the Pier 1 Imports for these DIYs. They had some really beautiful pastel spring colors and they were using a lot of the blue plaid and I just thought it looked super cute and sharp and just something different. I know blue is definitely one of the hot colors for this upcoming season. So for this one, I did just go ahead and let that Mod Podge dry again. And then once that had dried, and I did trim in and around the edges of it. And you'll probably want to go back in and very carefully Mod Podge in and around the, the edges of your plate to make sure they're on really well. And then I did go in again with a layer of white chalk paint that really makes uh, the plate stand out. But again, that's kind of an extra step that you guys don't totally have to take, but it does really make things stand out really nicely. And here is that Waverly, Waverly white chalk paint. This has really become my favorite chalk paint. It really um, goes on really well and it um, lasts really long and so I love that. So I'm just adding another layer of the white chalk paint to get my blue plaid to stand out really nicely. And then here is how it looks paired with my adorable little bunny play. I thought it just looked perfectly back there. And this DIY was so simple and really inexpensive um, with just the paper and the inexpensive plate. You could even check your thrift stores. I know sometimes my thrift stores have plates for a quarter. So this would be such a fun and easy DIY. Also just to transform some older plates and make them all new again. So for this round of DIYs, I was definitely feeling the pastel vibes with florals and Easter eggs and just all those fun vibes that you're going to think about for Easter with all of the beautiful florals. And this one was definitely all about 
the bunny for these DIYs. Um, definitely Easter is more than just the bunny, but it is fun to have fun with some little bunny DIYs. And I love seeing all of the beautiful bunny plates out in the store, but a lot of times I don't want to pay the money for them. So I thought that this would inspire you all to create your own and make something beautiful out of almost nothing. So as always, I ask that you all comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be trying to recreate, whether it be the little bunny pictures or the plates or even just the little Easter plaid plate. I love to have your feedback. It really helps me know what you guys want to see and how are you all decorating for Easter? I've done a bunch of French farmhouse DIYs so far, um, a lot of pastels for Easter and spring and even some buffalo check black and whites thrown in there. So I would love to hear what colors you will be using. So I know maybe some of the future upcoming DIYs that you all would love to see. But as always, I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching this video. I hope it gives you a break from whatever you have going on. It inspires you as well. So in this video, I am so excited to share with you all this beautiful over-the-top Easter mantle decor. I'm going to share with you guys a step-by-step -step on how I created this floral and all the bows. A lot of the items that you see here are from the Dollar Tree or that we have DIY'd. So definitely stay tuned. Let's get to crafting. Now for the first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to create a beautiful Olivia bow using ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. So if you guys are new to my channel, I have this little cool bow that I created. It's called the Olivia bow because honestly I couldn't make a bow to save my life. So I'm starting out and I'm using this blue Dollar Tree wired ribbon and I'm just going to take the ribbon and loop it over on itself. And you can see I have a tape measure because I lost my little cutting measuring board. And so I'm just making this first one 14 inches long and I looped it over on itself four times. And then I am just going to take my scissors and knock this bow in the center just tiny little itty bitty notches and the notches are for the wire or pipe cleaner that I'm going to use to hold the bow all together and be able to fluffy my little loops out really well. So I'm just using a pipe cleaner here and I'm going to twist tie the bow together and then I'm just going to set it aside to begin to make the other part of my bow. So I'm going to take off two inches. So now I'm going down to 10 inches here and I'm going to use this pretty little happy Easter ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Again, this one is wired and I'm going to loop it over on itself four times and then I'm just going to go ahead and trim that off. Again, I want to find my center by taking the bow and or the ribbon and just kind of cutting it in half here or um, just notching it is what I meant to say. Don't cut it. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so then I'm going to take and layer this on top of the first ribbon and just tie my little twist tie together. Now try to get it as tight as you can. That will help your bow stay together. Again, I took off two more inches and now this is about eight inches. So again, I'm going to loop it over on itself four times, find my center, cut little bitty tiny notches. And honestly, you don't even have to cut the notches, but if you pull too hard while you're fluffing, like I have known to do, um, it could pull apart. So then go ahead and add that on to the last layer. So basically you've just got these layers of a ribbon. And then this is my absolute favorite part in the whole world is fluffing out my bow. So I'm starting from the top and I'm just pulling my little layers out. But honestly, I recommend that you start from the bottom. Um, sometimes I get so excited crafting, I lose my head. Does that ever happen to you guys when you get just so excited to do some fun crafting that your head just falls off or that you're just brain falls out I guess is what I meant to say so now I'm just going to cut a little upward triangle here and so that is going to be called what I call dovetailing my ends and I'm going to do this to give my bow a little bit more of a boutique finish and you can tell I have different layers of a ribbon here for my tails that suits my fancy sometimes I will cut some extra tails if I want some extra longer tails I am trying to conserve this ribbon because I am going to be doing a super Super large little mantle garland. I want to have plenty of ribbon and the Dollar Tree ribbon does have a super ton on it. So here it is. I did give it even a bit more of a 
of fluffing and I'm going to add it to this mantle garland. Now don't panic, I'm gonna share with you guys step by step on how I put this together, starting from the very base of the garland. But I am taking some floral wire and I'm just gonna wire this on. And then here is what everything is gonna look like once we're finished. Now this is BAM over the top, totally just Easter, fabulous. So I've also shared with you guys a more pared down mantle decor with more of a French farmhouse vibe, but I decided that I just wanted something really gorgeous to look at and with lots going on and just super over the top. So if you're here for it and you love over the top decor or you just want to be entertained, this is what we have coming up in this video, a step-by-step -step on how I created this mantle garland. And so to get started with this, I'm starting out with this just piece of burlap ribbon. So this is a long, large piece of burlap. You can get it at burlapfabric.com or Walmart or any of your craft stores. This is going to be the base of what I'm going to build on. And I have three hooks on my mantle here, and it's actually just a little shelf. It's not really a mantle, um, but I'm going to take, and I am going to take four rolls of Dollar Tree Deco Mesh for this mantle, and this is so easy. So on each little point here on this end, I have, um, going to use a bit of wire and I'm going to tie this on. And so you can see I'm just kind of measuring here and now I'm getting my piece of wire. I'm gonna cut three pieces of wire to wire this um, deco mesh and burlap on. This is super easy. Um, you're just going to want to string your deco mesh down the edge and wire on in the center. I am wiring it on um, either side and in the center to give it just a little bit more stability. Full stop Can't believe I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening, and midnight Such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I Expected love was found You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm honest You're the leaves in mid-August And I've come out here to say So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more layer of burlap just to give it a little bit more of layers. And again, this is super over the top. So you guys do what you love, but this is what I am going for for this. And this is just gonna have a lot of little peekaboo colors showing through. And here's what it's gonna kind of look like once you have your layers of burlap and a deco mesh and so just to give you guys an idea, a little bit more of a close up, you can see those little pieces of wire. Those are gonna be used to secure the rest of the pieces of the garland on now. And then this is a little piece of greenery. I did share um, my little spring decorate with me just using this greenery and it looked so beautiful with just some little lights. So if you like more of a pared down look, you can definitely just use the greenery. But again, I'm going for super over the top. So I hope you guys are having fun with this. Again, I'm just going to attach my greenery with a bit of that floral wire.
And now that I have my greenery on comes my absolute favorite part, adding the bows. So I'm just gonna add my big Olivia bow to one side. Again, I'm just wiring it on to this side. And I did end up adding a bow to the center and a bow to the other side. So on either side, I did um, a matching bows. In the center, I like to do a bow that has a little bit different coloring and style. That way it's not totally matchy matchy. And this would be a super fun project if you were decorating for a bridal shower or a baby shower, or if you just love to go super over the top and have something for your eye to dance around on like I do. I also added in some 98 cents lilac that I found at Walmart, and then some of my little Michaels tulips that I found. They were half off at Michaels, so they were $1.99 a bundle, and they were just the little mini tulips for that. You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm on it You're the leaves in mid -August. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of their hanging Happy Easter signs and I'm just going to pull the entire sign apart. I did share with you guys all of the goodies that I'm going to be using in my Easter DIYs in one of my Dollar Tree hauls. So definitely go check that out. It's in my I Love Spring series, but just go ahead and detach all of the little eggs that were on that, that garland. We are going to use these to piece apart and add into the garland. So I'm just going to cut some little strips of paper off of this little bag. It's actually a little bit more of a heavy duty paper. You can also use tags or whatever suits your fancy. It's not going to show, so don't worry about that. I'm going to cut some of these pipe cleaners in half because I don't need a full pipe cleaner for this. And then I'm going to take my little egg, add the pipe cleaner and some hot glue. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take one of my little paper tabs and I'm going to push the paper tab down over the bit of um, little wire here. And then I'm going to go ahead and make several of them up. That way they're already ready and I can pop them into my garland super easy. So you can see I added a dab of hot glue and then my little pipe cleaners and then just little strips of paper that are going to go over that. And then make sure you also press them down. That way they hold nicely and don't pull apart. But this is such a fun little trick. It's also really great to do with with the little Dollar Tree signs. So now I'm just gonna pop them in to my darling little garland here. So I'm just gonna use the back of that pipe cleaner and pop those in super easy peasy. And look at how cute it is, just popped into this garland. And then for the next DIY, I'm gonna take these little Dollar Tree speckled eggs and I'm gonna take one of those half cut pipe cleaners. I'm going to poke the pipe cleaner into the little egg and then I'm going to take the piece um, of extra uh, cardstock that I had cut here. I added hot glue to either end and then I'm just going to add the cardstock on, but I don't want to glue them completely together because I want to pop them into my garland. And so if you guys can see, they have that little bit of space there and that gives you a spot to just twist tie them in. And then you guys can see the little greenery covers up the area of that pipe cleaner that that was in. And so I'm just going to pop several of these little bundles into my garland. That's just a little trick I have for you all. Now this garland is inside so I don't expect it to get any wind or whatnot. Um, I would be wiring these on probably a lot heavier if this was outside. I know with the outside garlands that I do I definitely have to go really heavy and make sure that um, everything's in there well. So for the next DIY we're just basically going to decorate with our Dollar Tree DIYs. Now I shared with you all how you can make these little baskets. I shared this DIY with you all last year but I also popped it into a compilation video Video for you. It has 10 DIYs in it. So these are both Dollar Tree um, Pottery Barn dupe baskets. And so they're super easy to make using Dollar Tree supplies. And then I'm just going to pop my little bunny into the basket. But then I decided to add some cake plates and decided to move my bunny into the center of this. I love decorating for spring and Easter. It's so fun. And I really do have to move things around quite a bit. Comment and let me know if you all have to do that. If you have to 
move things around and then take a step back. And I try to edit some of that out so you guys don't see me um, kind of obsessing about where I'm putting things. But I think that's just a, kind of the fun of decorating. So I ended up popping the little bunnies into the baskets and adding in some of those little Dollar Tree speckled Easter eggs. And then whatever little leftover tulips that had fallen to the ground, I popped those into the little baskets. And you guys can also see that I added in some greenery with some little ferns and then some of the extra 98 cent Walmart um, lilacs. They're kind of to the back of the baskets. So if you guys made those basket crafts with me last year, this might be an idea of how you can decorate with them. And then here is just some more DIYs. We DIYed that little happy Easter sign. And then I'm gonna share with you guys how I fixed up my cute little paint ladder. But um, oh my goodness, I am so crushing on this little Easter mantle. I just really felt like um, right now is the time to begin to just make my home beautiful. Um, you know, always I think it's a good time to make your home beautiful, but to really concentrate on making happy, cheery spaces in my home. So when I come home, I can just look at this and know that there's so much hope for the future and just feel happy and blessed. So have fun decorating and DIYing and crafting or just enjoy some of the fun things that I'm sharing with you guys. I hope this is bringing some sunshine to your day um, and a light to your life and just bringing a smile to your face. I know I love to watch decorating. So I think that this is just a fun way to lift your spirit. And so for the next DIY, I'm going to take my little ladder. I made this with paint sticks and two boards. So just paint sticks that you guys can grab free from Walmart and then two pieces of boards on either side. And then I'm taking this greenery. I also found this at Walmart. It was $3 a bundle. Really, really pretty greenery for very inexpensive. And I just take this little Dollar Tree Happy Easter sign. I apologize for the lighting goes in and out here. Sometimes it's hard to film at my house um, due to light. I do my best, but here I'm just going to pop it on to the little side of this ladder. And then I also want to go ahead and add some more goodies as far as a little bow and some other treasure. So I just made a quick little Olivia bow, super easy. You could also make a scrappy bow. Um, I do have a big bow video for you guys if you need help making bows. And I also did pop some of that little Walmart lamb's ear. It's $2 for two pieces, which I think is really a great deal and it's really pretty and very high quality. Now I'm just gonna fluffy up my bow and I just tied it to one side of the ladder and then I kind of let some of the other tails kind of cascade down it and then for the next DIY, I also wanted to share with you guys a bundle of, I took some Dollar Tree Easter eggs and then again, some lavender and some tulips. And this lavender, they also have at Walmart, but it's the longer stems. And what I did is I just ran a pipe cleaner through all three stems and then just looped those little Dollar Tree hanging eggs onto that. And I just thought that looked so fun and festive. I've had this DIY in my mind for a while, so I'm excited to bring it to life for you all. Um, I didn't end up adding the little happy Easter sign there. I thought it was a little bit too much to have two signs going on. So I changed my mind, which I'm definitely <laughs> going to do here and there when I'm decorating and DIYing. And I just decided to add the rest of that ribbon so it would tie in with the ribbon at the top. So I just made a little loopy bow and I'm tying this little Dollar Tree ribbon on with a pipe cleaner. Again, this little egg ribbon was also at a Dollar Tree. Um, they do have some beautiful spring ribbon out at Walmart and the craft stores where if you can't find it at Dollar Tree, definitely check out some of your other stores. I know even some of you have been commenting that you're finding ribbon online. So comment and let me know where your favorite place is to buy ribbon on a bargain, out of budget. I really try to get it um, on a bargain because I use so much of it. So here is my little blooming ladder. Um, this is just so fun and fabulous. And if you guys um, love home decor, definitely go check out my 
girl Liz at Traditions by the Season. She does a blooming hanging ladder um, above her kitchen table, which is really gorgeous. So I guess I kind of got the idea from her, except for this is more of a little bit of a different twist on hers. But definitely go check her out. I absolutely adore her. And if you're watching, I love you, Liz. And thank you for all the inspiration. Um, and so now I'm just going to add in some more little goodies with the little eggs. And you can see I added those fern pieces back there to the back of my baskets <laughs> and things just kept kind of flopping over but it's a fun to add in just a little bit of touches here and there from your extra leftovers I also store some of my leftover florals in bags so no piece I don't think ever goes to waste now this is just a blooming garden mantle floral arrangement I just wanted to explode and scream spring and I think that I'm really happy with this. It's definitely over the top. So if you love more of a minimal decor, you know, you could always pare some of this down. Um, but a lot of these items were from Dollar Tree or Walmart and they were very inexpensive. So I just encourage you guys to keep your eye out. I even find things at the thrift stores a lot of the times um, with the greenery and all of that good stuff. Um, and I've had this little bit of collection of florals going. So I was super excited to use these. And of course, at the end of every season I will tell you all that I take my florals apart if I haven't hot glued them you know where there's a lot of hot glue on them so I encourage you guys to take your florals apart and then store them and then you can reuse them so many times you'll see me redecorate and use some of the same florals I've already used but using them in a different way with different ribbons and then there's that blooming chair DIY that I shared with you guys it was a free thrift store chair and we made a blooming chair so definitely as always, I ask that you all comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and if you're going to be crafting and decorating, which one are you inspired to recreate? I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are and then stay tuned in the rest of this video. I'm going to share with you guys a quick little fun recipe and my thrift store outfit of the day. So now I just have to share with you all my chicken salad recipe. This is a super easy family favorite for us. So I'm just using two cans of the little great value Walmart canned chicken and then about three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. And this is about a quarter to a half a cup of onion, depending on how much onion you all like. I didn't end up using all of it because I didn't want it to overpower it. Sometimes my kids don't like it when I overuse onion. And then I'm going to use two of these um, dill pickles but I also use pickle chips or just pretty much whatever pickles you have on hand and I'm gonna go ahead and dice these up I thought this would be a fun recipe to share with you all because if you guys are pulling from your pantry stash um, you could make this fairly easily with what you might already have on hand and if you didn't have access to fresh onion you could also just use a bit of onion powder um, but you should be able to have you know the chicken and the mayo and the pickles all in a pantry stash. So I'm going to try to share different little pantry recipes with you all. So this is just some garlic salt. Um, I did add quite a bit, but I do love the taste of some garlic salt. And this is a 
bigger batch here. Um, I'm hoping to have some left over for my family. And then the chunk chicken that you're going to be using does, you, you kind of have to break it apart. And so I'm just using this spring mix salad mix. And I ended up having this for lunch. I like to dice up my salad pieces so they're not in such big chunks. And then I'm going to take some fresh broccoli. I like to buy the already um, chunked up broccoli, but you could definitely um, wash and cut your own. And so I'm just going to um, kind of chunk those down to where they're not quite so big. And and then I added about a half a cup of um, my chicken salad. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of ranch dressing. I would have preferred to have had a vinegar and oil dressing, but I was out. But this was my delicious little healthy lunch recipe I thought I would share with you guys. Okay, you guys. So here is my thrift store outfit of the day. I just have this white flowy top with a little soft Walmart tank top underneath. I have my little black Walmart leggings on and then my thrift store boots. So I am going to change into tennis shoes to do my crafting. I have neuropathy in my feet, I've told you guys a million times, so these boots are not gonna work for an all day crafting session. Um, and then I also just have these little white TJ Maxx earrings in. So it's kind of up and down weather-wise for us. So um, I have my heater on, but then I also don't wanna get hot while I'm filming. So, but I do want to be comfy because, hey, it's one of those days I love to be comfy while crafting. So there you guys have it, my thrift store outfit of the I day. found this potted fern on the Pottery Barn website. It was $69, and I just knew we could duplicate it using Dollar Tree supplies. So for the first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just taking this plastic garden planter. It is in kind of a beige -ish taupe color, and I... I found this one at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and take some of the Waverly white chalk paint. I get my chalk paint at Walmart. Um, I love the Waverly brand. It works so super well. And so I'm just going to go ahead and chalk paint my little planter. I am going to only use one coat because I do want a little bit of the basket weave and brown to show through. Once I have my planner all chalk painted, I'm going in with some of the Waverly Antique Wax and I got a generous dollop and I'm just going to rub that all over my little planter and I will tell you that it's fairly forgiving the waxes so if you get too much on, you can just go ahead and wipe some of it off. Now for me, I am going for a French farmhouse chic look with this planter. The Pottery Barn website did show a clay pot which would be nice as well. I know they do sell clay pots at Walmart but again, I wanted to use a budget friendly items from the Dollar Tree and so I just went ahead and went with this and plus I've already done one in a similar fashion I want this to kind of match the other one that I did and then I'm taking some floral foam I put the floral foam in the center and lesson learned it did not hot glue like I wanted to to the size of the pot and so I'm taking some of these paper um, this was just some paper left over from some shopping and I'm just going in and around my little planter and that secure my floral foam in there absolutely perfectly. Now I did buy a bundle of fern branches from Walmart. I believe they're between three and five dollars and I do have a couple of the actual branches clipped off so I put one bundle in the center and then the branches that I clipped off from this bundle um, I'm just going to go in and around the larger bundle. So it's only going to take one bundle. Um, now if you wanted a super huge one you could buy two bundles but I felt like one was sufficient enough for the size of my planter and also clipping some of the firm pieces off did give me a little bit um, more ability to kind of fan them out a bit. Now if you have cats that might get into your little faux fern you may want to leave them all in one bundle and I hope that makes sense for you guys. Now that I have it all finished up I wanted to go in with a bit of burlap fabric in and around where the paper is. I wanted to hide that. You could also use some excelsior grass or moss or whatever you have on hand to kind of make your plant look a little bit more realistic, um, which I'm not super worried about this. It was definitely on a budget, which I'm absolutely loving. So play with your bits of uh, burlap until you get in there just perfectly. And then I did give my fern some fluffing. And here is how it looks in my little French farmhouse chic garden setup. I think it is looking perfect. And I think it is a nice pop of greenery. I think it will pop perfectly into a tablescape 
or I'm probably gonna use it next to my fireplace, my faux fireplace in my home. I am so ready for spring. Comment and let me know if you guys are there with me. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna take this Every Bunny Welcome sign and a dab of this beautiful Bordeaux. It's Arteza craft paint, but honestly, you guys could use any craft paint. They sent it to me free in the mail, so I thought, why not go ahead and use this? You can find craft paint at Walmart for about 48 cents. Um, you can also sometimes find craft paint at your local Dollar Tree, depending upon where you're shopping. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paint the bunny part of this sign in this pretty brown and then I'm also going to paint the scrolly lettering but I feel like the rest of the sign is absolutely perfect I think a lot of the Dollar Tree signs are adorable um, I did I do love pink and I do love sparkly things but for this French farmhouse chic look that I'm going for I wanted to calm down a little bit of the hot pink on this sign So here is how my every bunny welcome the sign is mixing in with my little garden display here. I really feel like to bring spring into your home, it is so fun to add some touches of greenery and some pops of whatever spring color that you absolutely adore. But I feel like also I love this little every bunny welcome sign. It just brings a cheerful smile to my face. It adds in that hint of Easter and just welcoming my guests to my home. I think I'm going to pop it outside of my front door will be the perfect spot so I will definitely show you guys where I plan to put that it is raining and cold today so not today so for the next Dollar Tree DIY I'm going to take this 2x ultra coverage with primer spray paint it's in a gold color and I'm basically using this because this is what I have on hand if you guys know me by now I really try to use what I already have but I gave it one coat of spray paint and then I'm going to go in with just a dusting of chalk paint so you guys could see that I kind of dabbed my paintbrush off so I this is what I kind of call dry brushing where you get a little bit of paint on your brush and then you dab it off that way you can kind of give this dry brush effect I'm gonna add layer and layer and layer of paint colors and wax I really want this to make it look like it is an old garden planter that has been setting outside and that's even got some you know moss and just some weathered age look so I added first a coat of white paint and then I'm going in with the Waverly wax and I'm just kind of moving that in and around the little garden planter and then I decided that I needed a little bit more of an aged look as well so I added in some more of the wax and a good way to age something is to add the wax in and around the parts that are the edges so where you would be picking something up or where you'd expect to have that normal wear and tear Now I'm going in with some green craft paint. One of my subscribers had suggested that I used a little bit of green on my pots and some different goodies like that. So I added in some green and then I'm gonna temper that with some more of the aged wax and some more of the white paint. And then I did go back in with my rag and I smoothed some of that out, out so you could still see the gold underneath. And I think it fits oh so perfectly in with my French farmhouse sheet decor and who would know that this was a little um, watering can from the Dollar Tree so fun and fabulous and of course you all can always paint this a solid color you could add a graphic to the outside which I actually thought about doing I didn't have time today to do that but definitely next time I sure might so for the next Dollar Tree DIY I'm gonna take and I just spray painted one of the little Dollar Tree garden tins white and then I'm using this 
lavender from Walmart. Now this tall lavender is $3 per bundle, but I think it's totally worth it because it's really going to give this arrangement some dimension. And then I'm going in with a Dollar Tree fern. I'm going to pop that into the back. So I always try to use the taller parts of my display and florals kind of to the center and the back. And then the ferns I'm using kind of to the side. And then I'm going in with some Dollar Tree little green hydrangeas. And I'm just going to pop those in for some pops of color. Again, I want this to have an English garden springtime French farmhouse look. So I want it to be a little bit wild, kind of that wild garden look. Um, and then I found these little purple hydrangeas at a garage sale. I believe originally they came from Hobby Lobby. They're absolutely beautiful. And I really love using purple during springtime. Um, if you all noticed in the beginning of my video, I had some purple flowers. Those are actually in my backyard. And I'm going to give you guys another close up of those um, towards the end of this video, but I have this beautiful purple ground cover in my backyard that just makes it look so beautiful in the springtime. So I'm continuing to add in some more beautiful florals as I work. And again, I didn't buy any of these florals. I just had pretty much all of these on hand. So use what you have. And this floral is going to go into my bike. I have a bike in my front yard um, that I love to do a beautiful garden display. So I will share with you guys how my bike is looking again once it stops raining and warms up just a bit. Hold you in my arms, won't let go. The world around can pass us by. Thunderstorm, a lightning strike as we hold each other. And here is how my beautiful French garden um, farmhouse little planter tin is looking. I did get the French one for this video. They also sell the garden planter at Dollar Tree and the English version, but I thought since this is a French farmhouse chic video, it would be perfect. And I just love how full and gardeny it feels. I also add in a little bit of the white Dollar Tree um, florals as well. And then I just added these pretty little Dollar Tree candles. And also I want to let you guys know that the Target Dollar Spot has this little two-tiered um, tray that you guys see, the one with the bunnies on it. They have that at Target for $5, which I thought was a steal of a deal. I'm probably going to end up using this inside in a centerpiece or a tablescape, or maybe even by my little coffee maker, but I just had to share that with you guys as well. So for the next Dollar tree DIY. I'm going to take this little bunny banner and I'm going to take it apart and pop the little bunny tails off. Now don't panic. They will be going back on the little bunny bottoms. I did go ahead and chalk paint this bunny. I thought I was going to do something different with it, but I decided to cover it with this striped fabric. This to me really screams French farmhouse. You can get this ticking fabric at Walmart fairly inexpensively. And I'm just going to cut the bit of fabric to fit the size of the bunny. And then I'm just going to hop glue in and around the edge of the bunny and so that's going to give me this really cute little kind of French farmhouse chic bunny. Now just hot glue small sections. I did have to end up going back in because I hot glued too big of a section. Comment and let me know if that ever happens to you and you end up having to redo your work because you're not working quite fast enough. It seems like with the fabric it does dry very quickly so you just have to be careful. Also press your fabric down really well that way it'll stick nice and 
good, um, but I could have skipped painting the bunny had I known I was going to use this color of fabric. Originally, I thought I was going to use a lighter fabric that the bunny color was going to show through. So once you get your little bunny fabric all glued on, you can take your scissors and just carefully trim in and around the edge of your bunny. It would even be super cute to edge it with a bit of lace. So I popped the little bunny butt tail back on and there she is all fabulous French farmhouse chic and I popped her in to the top part of my little um, two-tiered tray over there. I love this. It's just so cute and fabulous and the greenery and the flowers and the little bunnies just make my heart sparkle and shine and make me feel so so ready for spring. In fact I don't know where you all live but where I live we have little baby bunnies um, that pop in and out of our yard so and my daughter just has a thing for bunnies. She has a little old fashioned bunny that she's had for years that she calls pretty bunny. So, so fun. So for the next Adele Tree DIY, I'm taking um, a chicken can. This was actually from the recipe that I shared with you all in the last video. We made chicken salad. So definitely go check that video out. It also had a bunch of DIYs in it, but I'm trying to share with you guys some recipes here and there. But I'm just gonna take my little chicken tin that I cleaned out really well, and I'm gonna add some burlap fabric in and around the chicken tin. You can find burlap fabric at burlapfabric.com or Walmart or even your Dollar Tree. And you could also even use some brown fabric or just whatever little bits and bobs you have on hand. Now I'm going to add some hot glue to the inside of my little chicken can. And what I want to make here is a DIY little bird's nest. And then I went outside and I found this just dried um, stuff that I really am probably going to need to weed outside. Um, and so I just brought that inside and wrapped it around my little tin. And then I took a piece of wire and this is just floral wire that I found at the Dollar Tree. I wrapped the floral wire around it. You could also use some old leaves or just some sticks from your yard if you have those available or a Celsius grass um, from Dollar Tree would also work if you don't have access to this dry bits of um, leaves. And so I'm adding in a little bit of burlap fabric into the center of this and look at how fast we build a wonderful little springtime bird's nest. I'm absolutely in love with this project. So here it all is popped in together, making this beautiful French farmhouse chic garden display. I am definitely going to replicate this inside my home. This is actually my little crafting studio, which is a little corner in my garage. I had somebody ask me the mantle that's in my home is also very similar to the mantle that my husband built in my crafting studio in my garage. So if you guys want to know how to build those mantles, definitely check out those videos as well. Um, but I am so in love with this springtime goodness. And I asked my daughter while I was painting the interior of my house to pop out outside and get some footage of you all for um, from my garden and so this is just my backyard with the little purple flowers it was actually a really nice day yesterday before it turned cold and rainy on us again so she had a lot of fun just taking this footage for you all and let me tell you she is one talented lady I love the close-ups that she got and then I also have my little yellow flowers blooming in my front yard look at what a great job she did getting this footage and I really thought this would bring you some hope and cheer into your day to see what's going on with spring. I feel like spring is such a time of hope. No matter where you're at and what you're going through in your life right now, try to always look forward to the future with hope and not fear or worry. Um, just know that God has got you. So always I ask you comment and let me know what is your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? Thank you for spending time with me. It is a true blessing and an honor and I love y'all. So for the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to take these super adorable little lemon prints and I'm going to remove them from their frames. I absolutely adore the little prints inside and the frames are cute, but I don't decorate with a whole lot of gold. So I'm just going to take them outside and spray paint them with some flat white 
Rust-Oleum spray paint. This is probably my favorite is the 2X Rust-Oleum spray paint, but you could use the $1.99 spray paint as well. I did use a tiny bit of antique wax I rubbed on them to give them a bit of an aged look. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put them back into their frames. I think painting frames is such a great way to add some pops of color or if you're going for whites like I am to just streamline your pictures and update them just a bit, really just to make them fit into your decor. So I love this. It says, be still and know that I am with you. And it has a beautiful little lemons. And then the other one says, our family is just the right mix of chaos and love, which I think really defines our little family that we have in my home. We're a little bit chaos and a whole lot of love. <laughs> so it also goes really well with my Pioneer Woman dishware. Um, I've been kind of adding to the collection a little bit. My Santa Pops got me over Christmas. And then there's that little DIY ladder that we did in one of my last videos. And then here's kind of a sneak peek of the tablescape I created and some of the DIYs we're going to do to make this happen. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking this Dollar Tree glass vase and then I found this lace at the thrift store. They also carry lace at Walmart or any of your local craft stores and I'm just wrapping the vase in some lace. So you can see I'm hot gluing one little strip here and then uh, just a tiny dab of hot glue just enough to get your lace to hang, hold on to your glass. Now if you guys have a better way to do this definitely let me know. You could also maybe use a tiny bit of tape but I've used tape before with this spray paint. Um, that we're going, getting ready to do. It didn't work so great. So just continue to add the lace in and around your vase and try to get it to um, be as straight as possible. So once you have your lace on, you can just go ahead and take your vase and spray paint over the lace. And then underneath, this is so magical. I love this little trick. You just take the lace off and voila, you have this fabulous little French country um, farmhouse chic, shabby chic, vintage style vase underneath. These are so fun to do for bridal or if you decorate in a shabby chic style. And so then I'm just going to show you guys a couple ideas on how you can style this. You could pop some lemon branches. This was a lemon DIY that we did using Dollar Tree supplies a couple of DIYs back and that makes a nice fresh little lemon vase or you could add um, a bit of a burlap uh, floral to this. So this is just like a little burlap flower. Burlapfabric.com sent these to me. Thank you. I'll leave a link down below. And also this was what I ended up with. I added some of those totally dazzled.com little gems. They come um, in a 10 pack and they're about $15. So you get all these beautiful gems. I'll leave that link down below. I definitely suggest that one if you all are loving to add some bling or some dazzle or getting ready for anything bridal. Um, it leaves the gems being less than a dollar a gem. And if you ever, ever shopped for jewels like that, you'll know they're a lot more expensive. And so here is how I styled it on my Easter tablescape here. I popped in these beautiful roses. I found these roses at a garage sale, but the original tags have the Hobby Lobby. I believe they were for a wedding bouquet. Imagine my surprise and excitement to find these for only a couple of dollars at a garage sale. I'm so excited for garage sale season to let me know if you guys love to shop tag sales, garage sales, and flea markets. I definitely wait until the weather's really nice. Um, and um, it does get even a little bit warm here sometimes. So I try to go as much as I can in the spring. But here it is all mixed in with this tablescape. And I am so crushing on these bright pops of color. I decided to mix in my beautiful lemon decor with Easter. Reason being, I just wanted to make it so bright and cheerful and happy. So I hope you guys are loving it. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree candlestick. Now I had already put it on 
on with this plate with a little bit of E6000 glue and hot glue. I'm taking two more white dinner plates and I'm just going to go ahead and add the candlestick. So this is a Dollar Tree candlestick. I just spray painted white with some spray paint. I'm adding some E6000 glue. Now the reason I add the E6000 glue and the hot glue together is the hot glue will help it stay temporarily and the E6000 glue will help it stay permanently. So I'm also adding the same mixture of E6000 and hot glue to the top of my candlestick and then I'm going to place my plate as evenly and as centered as possible. And then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add my smaller plate. So this is going to give me a beautiful three-tiered tray for not that expensive. And a lot of these items you may already have in your cupboard, some extra little plates or whatnots lying around that you can dazzle up in this fashion. So to style my little three-tiered tray, I added this bouquet of roses to the top with a vintage Easter greeting card. I also decided to add some of those Dollar Tree speckled eggs and this little bunny I found at the thrift store with some of the Dollar Tree carrots and then those DIY buffalo check plaid carrots. You can see one peeking out underneath. I wanted to add in the buffalo check plaid because I do have a little buffalo check plaid uh, banner in my dining room and you guys will get a peek of that in just a bit. But oh my goodness, I love how this just added some height and dimension to my little table setting. So fun and fabulous and oh so ready for springtime cheer. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of those Dollar Tree little mats. This is just a little floor mat and then I'm going to take this old piece of curtain from the thrift store. You guys, this curtain had some spots on it so I decided to repurpose and reuse it and so I'm just going to lay it gently over the little doormat here and then I'm going to take the flat 2x rust-oleum spray paint. This is absolutely my favorite. I love it so much and I'm just going to go ahead and spray a good healthy layer over my little piece of lace here. So you want to spray a nice little generous amount and then you can go ahead and peel it off and this is my favorite part ever. Voila! How fabulous is this? Oh my goodness. I definitely recommend flat spray paint for this project. You don't want to be sticky if you're using it as your doormat. Um, but check this out. I think it's so vintage chic and nobody would know that this little doormat mat was from the Dollar Tree. It lo definitely looks very designer um, and just gorgeous and almost Victorian um, with a shabby chic mix. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to make a beautiful Olivia bow. I'm starting out with this Dollar Tree Easter egg ribbon and I'm just going to do four little loops here. So you just take the ribbon, loop it over on itself four times. You're going to trim it off and I'm just kind of going um, um, wild and crazy here with my layers. Usually I try to measure them, but for the life of me, I can't find any of my measuring tools. Please let me know if you guys are here with me on that. I, oh goodness. Anyway, I lose my craft supplies so easily. So now I'm going to do another layer, same way here. I'm just taking the ribbon and looping it over on itself four times and then I'm going to notch it in the center itty bitty tiny notches so this is what I call the Olivia bow and I do have a huge bow video I'll link down below for you guys in case you need help with your bows um, but I'm going to take it after I've notched it and I'm just going to twist tie it together with these little pipe cleaners now remember when you notch it in the center do tiny tiny notches um, and then I ended up adding my last layer um, at the end. Usually I start with my last layer, but again, I was just kind of going for it. And um, so then I'm going to add two tiny little notches on either side of my ribbon. Remember, tiny, tiny notches. You guys don't want to ruin your ribbon and have your bow fall apart. So then once you have that all together, you can go ahead and fluff it out a bit. My favorite part. <laughs> So 
So I decided we needed to make a big, beautiful Easter wreath. So I'm gonna take this little Easter wreath base I found at Walmart. I believe it's about $4.97. And I'm gonna take the pipe cleaner and just wire my bow on. I make, I actually made two of these bows. Um, I made one for the top part of the wreath. It was a little bit fluffier than the bottom part of the wreath bow, but I make really big over the top wreaths. And so I just realized I hadn't made a really big over the top wreath yet for this season. I've made a couple wreaths, but none that are just really crazy big. So this is going to be the one. So I'm just giving my bow a really, really good fluffing. And then I'm going to take, um, you can see my daughter was helping me. I dropped my bow. So she was to the rescue. Um, but I am taking this pipe cleaner and I'm just going to hot glue it to the back of my little Easter sign. I'm using the pink little Easter, happy Easter um, sign that I found at Dollar Tree. This is such an adorable sign and I'm just twist tying that on and then I'm going to go ahead and take some ferns. You can find ferns at the Dollar Tree or at Walmart or your craft store but I want to add just a bit of greenery underneath before I start lay layering all of my flowers. So I'm adding another fern to the top and this is kind of a fun way to work is to add a couple of florals to either side of your bow if you're kind of new to wreath making that might help you out and then I'm taking some of these tulips. This is just a pale pink tulip and then for some reason I had a ton of these hot pink tulips and these were all from Michael's they were a dollar 99 um, Dollar Tree does carry tulips but sometimes they can be a bit tricky to find so I just went ahead and went for it and grabbed some from Michael's because I really wanted to share this project with you guys um, but anyway I'm adding in some more hot pink tulips now, I really would have loved it if I would have had some hot pink ribbons. The only thing I really felt like I was missing with this project, but I soldiered on. I really, if you guys are new, um, uh, you'll know. I try to use what I already have on hand. I really try to push myself because as a crafter, I do accumulate a lot of supplies and it's easy to go out and just buy new stuff all the time. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail my ends here, which means I'm gonna cut a triangle in an upward direction and give that wreath a nice boutique finish. And then of course I did add layers of eggs and more florals and then just some other little Easter goodies. These are all from the Dollar Tree except for the florals. Some of the florals are from Dollar Tree but some of the larger florals again those were my garage sale store finds and thrift store finds with the roses. Those were those bouquets I found last summer at the garage sale. So anyway here it is over the top oh so fabulous and ready for the happiest Easter ever. I'm telling you you guys I'm just really wanting to make my home look really, really cheerful and happy to share this with you guys. I want this to be your dose of sunshine in your life for this moment and just take this in and know that we can all look forward to the future with so much hope and joy in our hearts. So I just want you all to remember that. And also I ask that you guys comment and let me know what is your favorite DIY in this video. I love to hear what your feedback is. It really helps me know um, some of the next DIYs that I need to do for you all. Um, if you like the simpler ones or the more intensive ones, I try to do something for every crafting level. Um, but definitely let me know which one was your favorite and which one you'll, will you be recreating. I also love to see all of your work that you're doing, um, sharing with me on my Facebook group page. I have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook group page, and I just love to see all of your projects and also the ones that you're sharing with me on Instagram. So tag me on Instagram, Olivia's Romantic Home. Um, and I just want to encourage you again to look forward to the future with so much hope and joy in your heart. Springtime is right around the corner, and I thank you for being here. And I just love y'all so, so, so much. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. Again, I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. I am a dedicated wife, mama, and crafter, and just lover of transforming inexpensive Dollar Tree items into fun and fabulous home decor. So if you guys are new, I would love to have you subscribe. Be part of my YouTube channel. It's totally free. Click the subscribe button and the little bell will update you every time I post a new video. And thank you guys for coming back and watching my videos. You are like a cup of sun 
sunshine, a ray of goodness in my heart, and I am just so blessed and honored to have you all here. I want to hug all of you, and thank you for your kind comments. They just make my heart sparkle and shine. Truly, I love y'all so much. I also want to tell you that I have a Libby's Romantic Home Facebook group page. It's totally free to join. Pop over there, request to join my Libby's Romantic Home Facebook group page, and you can connect with other crafty decor friends and just share photos of your DIY projects and what you're up to with your decor over there. Everybody is just posting so many fun and fabulous ideas. I want to thank you guys so much for sharing your heart and your art with me. Um, you just guys mean so much to me. So I also have a Louise Romantic Home Instagram page. I share a good morning coffee with you every morning. I'm a total morning person. So I'd love to say good morning to you all and share sneak peeks behind the scenes of my little crafty decor projects as well as some little condensed DIY videos. So thank you guys again. I love you all truly to the men and back. Again, it's a blessing and an honor to have you all here. And I just just want to encourage you all to look forward to the future with joy in your hearts and a spring in your step because spring is right around the corner. Um, I also want to remind you, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. And no matter where you're at in your crafting, decorating, or just life journey in general, try to look on the sunny side of life and just know that every day is a new day that God has given you and blessed you with. So just enjoy every moment of that day. Try not to worry and fear and um, just try to be happy. So I I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Again, I'm hugging your hearts so tight. Until the next video, we will talk to you later. Bye-bye. And I've come out here to say.